Welcome to Scripted Summaries. I'm going to recap 2009 film titled Solomon Kane. Please subscribe and like the video. In North Africa in the 16th century, English privateer Solomon leads his crew into a battle to defeat the Ottoman defenders that have taken over a town. A fierce battle happens on the streets, and Solomon shows off his great fighting skills, killing enemies without mercy. Eventually, they make it to the castle, and the defenders immediately close the door, trying to leave them out. However, Solomon's team immediately blows up the entrance. As flames spread through the corridors, Solomon stares at the bodies until he finds a soldier still alive and threatens him until the man confesses the location of the throne room. Before leaving, Solomon shoots him dead. The group moves into the throne room and finds a bunch of mirrors around. As the men start moving inside, demons come out of the glass to attack and kidnap some of the warriors, taking them into the mirrors. The crew is terrified, but Solomon wants them to keep going. And when a guy tries to run away, Solomon shoots him. At that moment, a door opens at the back, revealing the throne. Solomon goes in only for the door to close behind him, leaving his crew outside. Then he starts hearing a weird noise, but ignores it to grab the treasure. Nearby, the body of the king starts freezing up, and Solomon checks on his breath, confirming the temperature has gone down. As a chill takes over the room, a bunch of shadows begin coming out of the statues surrounding Solomon. Suddenly, the shadows gather at the throne and reveal a demon known as the Devil's Reaper who hits Solomon with his power to make him fall. The Reaper explains that he came to take Solomon's soul because he had a life full of murder and greed, hitting Solomon again for talking back to him before summoning a fiery sword. Then, the Reaper tries to slash Solomon, who stops the blade with his own swords and announces he isn't ready for hell. Solomon dodges the Reaper's attacks in quick succession and jumps through the window to escape. One year later in England, Solomon is living in a monastery. He's renounced violence and donated his wealth to the church as part of cleansing his soul to find redemption and avoid hell. Solomon's also covered his room with creepy notes and gotten a bunch of tattoos that protect him from demon attacks. One afternoon, a priest explains that since Solomon moved in, he could feel a shadow growing over them and last night, a prophetic dream told him Solomon must leave the monastery. A devastated Solomon makes his way out, not knowing where to go. Solomon begins wandering aimlessly and crosses the countryside during winter, seeing many things like plague doctors burning down contagious people and local townspeople hung in rows as punishment. One day, a cart carrying the Crowthorn family passes by and offers him a ride, but Solomon turns it down. Later that day, Solomon stops to rest and hears some whispering. Suddenly, he's captured from behind by a man with a knife. Two more men come out of hiding, and they hit Solomon a couple of times before checking his bag, only to notice he doesn't have any money. When they find some papers full of symbols, they assume he's a sorcerer and put him near the fire, saying they should burn him like a witch. Solomon pushes back, yet he doesn't defend himself, so the thieves hit him again until he passes out. Then a flashback reveals that Solomon grew up as the child of an important lord. However, because he was the second son, his father wanted him to become a priest while his brother Marcus took over the lands. Solomon refused to become a priest and ran away from home, so his father disinherited him. The reaper suddenly appears in the flashback and Solomon wakes up, realizing he's in the cart with the Crowthorns. The family promises he's safe with them, and soon they stop to camp for the night. Solomon should be resting, but he doesn't want to be rude and volunteers to help. First, he washes up, and the children keep staring at his tattoos. Later over dinner, Solomon shares some stories about all the people who hired his crew to fight for them. The daughter Meredith finds the tales exciting, but her older brother calls her out for supporting violence. Then, the father William mentions he used to be part of the Queen's army until he found his faith. Killing used to be hard for William, but Solomon admits it came easy to him. That night, Solomon dreams of his childhood again. When he was leaving his father's lands, he found Marcus trying to take advantage of a girl, slapping her to keep her quiet. Solomon tried to stop him and took out a knife, but Marcus easily overpowered him and cut his cheek. Then Marcus took Solomon to the edge of the cliff, pushing Solomon as he tells him to leave. Solomon pushes back, and Marcus trips over a rock, causing him to fall off the cliff. In the present, Solomon wakes up and joins William by the fire. William shows him a locket with pictures of his wife and daughter. Then he explains his family will be sailing to the new world to start over. He invites Solomon to come along, 
but Solomon explains his soul is damned and the family shouldn't want him around. For the next few days, Solomon continues to travel with the Crowthorns and Meredith makes some new clothes for him. One afternoon, Meredith's younger brother Samuel asks Solomon to show him some sword moves, so Solomon does some basic training using sticks. At that moment, they come across a burned town, so they go investigate. There are bodies with burned eyes everywhere, and William blames it on the devil. But Solomon finds a pyre and realizes the townspeople failed to burn a witch. Meredith notices some movement and finds a girl still alive among the bodies. The child is taken to their camp, and she confirms that the townspeople tried to burn a witch, but the fire didn't hurt her. The witch killed all the locals and burned their eyes for coming to see her burn. The Crowthorns want to pray for the dead, and the girl furiously refuses. So Solomon gets suspicious. He takes a cross from the family and tries to give it to the kid, who turns to Meredith and tells her, it's you we want. The girl is actually the witch, who puts a strange mark on Meredith's hand before her eyes change. She jumps on Solomon to attack him, saying the devil is waiting for him. Solomon pushes her off, and the witch shows her real form, failing another attack before transforming into birds to escape. In a town nearby, a bunch of violent cultists are attacking the locals and putting them in cages for their master, the sorcerer Malachi. They're led by the masked rider, who rewards the men by touching their faces and transferring some power. The men's eyes change, and the rider's hand leave burn marks on their skin. But now they're more powerful. Meanwhile, the Crowthorns are setting up camp, and Solomon checks the mark on Meredith's hand, but he doesn't recognize it. In the evening, Samuel wakes Solomon up, saying he's heard some weird noises. Solomon goes to check and discovers Malachi's cult kidnapping more people. With Solomon away, it's easy for the cultists to surround the camp and kidnap the family, easily overpowering William when he tries to poorly defend himself. They notice the mark on Meredith's hand and announce she's the one, which the masked rider approves of. Soon, Solomon arrives, and Samuel asks him to kill them all. But instead, Solomon tries to negotiate for the family's freedom. The masked rider uses his magic to talk through one of his men, asking Solomon to kill him. Solomon refuses because he's a man of peace, and the thug immediately kills Samuel. A devastated Solomon finally decides to drop his oath of peace, saying he'll gladly go to hell in exchange for killing such monsters. Solomon furiously begins fighting the killer, easily disarming him and stabbing him with his own knife. As some of the cultists try to fight him too, the others take Meredith away. William tries to help her only to get stabbed by two men, and soon his older son is killed as well. And even angrier, Solomon decapitates another cultist and keeps on fighting, killing any man that dares to go against him. While he's distracted, the masked rider and most of his group leave with Meredith on their horses, so Solomon isn't fast enough to follow them. Afterward, Solomon checks on William, who makes him swear an oath that he'll rescue Meredith. William says that if Solomon saves Meredith, his soul will be saved as well. Then William dies, and his wife gives Solomon the locket for his search. Before leaving, Solomon takes some weapons and a horse from the cultists and notices the dark power leaving their bodies. As he rides through the forest, some cultists come out of hiding and start chasing him. Solomon takes out two guns and shoots both guys at the same time. Then he catches up to a group on the road, quickly killing all the bad guys with precise strikes of his sword. Next, Solomon opens the cage with the victims and shows them the locket, asking about Meredith. Sadly, none of them saw her before. A few miles from there, the cultists raid and burn down another town. Meredith is in a cage and tells the other victims to stay calm while the masked rider stares at them. Three days later, Solomon sees tons of people walking away from another destroyed town, trying to find a new home. He decides to ride to the ruins and rest at an abandoned church. When he starts praying, he's suddenly startled by a man, so he takes out his sword. However, it's just Father Michael who never left his church. He explains he's seen some terrible things and confirms the cultists destroyed the area. Their master Malachi is a servant of the devil, but nobody has ever seen him because he hides in his castle. The cultists' victims are made soldiers or slaves depending on their strength. Suddenly, Solomon hears a noise, so Michael opens a hatch on the ground to reveal a bunch of ghouls hidden underground. Solomon can't believe Michael didn't destroy them, so the priest explains these used to be his parishioners. Malachi's curse changed them, so Michael doesn't think it's right to kill them for something that wasn't their fault. He also admits he feeds them before pushing Solomon into the hole and closing the hatch. The ghouls immediately surround Solomon and get ready to eat him. 
but Solomon takes out his sword and starts killing them. Some of the ghouls feed on their dead fellows, while others continue to attack Solomon, whose torch helps him keep the ghouls at bay. In the church, Michael tries to hear what's happening, only for someone to suddenly come in and attack him. Down in the tunnel, a ghoul jumps on Solomon's back, so he pushes it against the wall to hit it. This creates a hole, so Solomon throws the ghoul away and makes the hole bigger to escape. As he runs through a narrow tunnel, the ghouls try following him, so Solomon uses his torch to keep them away and tosses debris on the ground to block them. When he's about to get to the exit, a ghoul tries attacking him, but Solomon kills him in seconds. Two more ghouls show up and start chasing him, so Solomon runs to the exit and breaks the wood to come out to the surface. The ghouls try following him, but the light burns them, so they rush back inside. Then Solomon is surrounded by the thieves from before, who drop Michael's head. All three of them have agreed to work for Malachi, and now they hold power too. However, they still don't know how to use it, and it's very easy for Solomon to fight them, bringing them down one by one in just a matter of minutes. Then he threatens to throw one of them to the ghouls while showing him the picture of Meredith, demanding to know where she is. The thief says the girl is dead, and Solomon freaks out, hitting the guy before letting the ghouls take him. Sometime later, Solomon makes it to a town, and he goes to a tavern to get drunk, hoping to forget about his troubles. At that moment, he's approached by some members of his old crew who want Solomon to be their captain again. However, Solomon refuses because he has nothing to fight for. Later in the middle of the night, a group of men surprises Solomon while he's asleep and capture him. The next morning, two guys are crucified for defying Malachi while the masked rider watches. Soon, Solomon is brought over too, and the rider orders his men to crucify him as well. Unlike the other guys, Solomon doesn't scream, thinking he's earned it. Once Solomon passes out, the masked rider rides away with his group. At the back of the caravan, they bring the slave cages, which include Meredith alive and well. She sees Solomon on the cross and starts yelling his name, causing him to wake up and discover she's fine. A desperate Solomon begins pulling his hands from the nails and unties the rope, so he falls to the ground. The cultists surround him and get ready to kill, only for Solomon's old crew to show up and fight them instead, defeating them in seconds. In the evening, Solomon wakes up on a bed in a hideout where a healer is taking care of his injuries. Solomon tells her to leave him alone before he removes the bandage and notices the scars left by the nails. After confirming he can still use his hands, Solomon starts packing to leave and a crew member tells him he should wait until he's fully healed. Solomon reacts violently so the others stop him explaining that they're willing to fight with Solomon to defeat Malachi. Over dinner, the group shares more of Malachi's background. He used to be a priest and a healer, but he sold his soul to the devil for power. The mask rider follows Malachi's orders, and rumors say he has no face under the mask. Solomon points out they must kill Ryder first to leave Malachi vulnerable, and the group tells him the enemy's base is Exmouth Castle, which shocks Solomon because that's where he grew up. The crew informs him the lord of the castle died, so Solomon becomes even hungrier for revenge and orders everyone to get ready. Sometime later, Solomon and the crew sneak into the castle's ground through a hidden tunnel that Solomon remembered from his childhood. The witch from before appears on a balcony and throws a skull at the same time that Solomon throws his sword, killing her. The skull shatters on the ground as an alarm and tons of cultists come out to start a fight. As men begin to die all over the place, the masked rider also comes out and starts killing the crew one by one. Solomon rushes to stop his attack and tells his men to run and hide since they can't win this. As the crew gets away, Solomon fights the rider, who soon pushes Solomon back, and he uses the chance to hide behind a door, locking it so he can't be followed. Afterward, Solomon sneaks through the corridors, hiding whenever the cultists pass by. Eventually, he makes it to the dungeon, and when he's about to free the slaves, a cultist appears behind him. Solomon kills pretty quickly, and then uses his keys to open all the cells. Unfortunately, Meredith isn't among the prisoners. One man is left behind, and when Solomon checks on him, he's shocked to discover it's his father. A desperate Solomon struggles with the chains, but his father explains they can't be broken because they were made with dark magic. Solomon finally apologizes for Marcus' death, but his father reveals Marcus never died. The boy had survived the fall, but he was terribly wounded and wouldn't wake up. Doctors and priests didn't know what to do, so the father hired a sorcerer. Marcus woke up, but he was taken over by the darkness. He also only obeyed the sorcerer's orders. 
The wounds on his face were so bad that he started wearing a mask. It turns out, Marcus is the masked rider, and the sorcerer that brought him back had been Malachi, who took all the Lord's money as payment. The father feels extremely guilty about this, so he takes Solomon's gun and asks for an end. Crying, Malachi shoots his father to free him from his pain. In another tunnel, the crew is holding back the cultists with fire and crossbows, but they won't be able to stand for much longer. Solomon soon arrives, and after killing an enemy, he asks the crew to buy him just a few more moments to put an end to this. Next, he goes to the throne room and pounds on the closed door. At that moment, a bunch of cultists appear behind him, but before they can fight, the doors open. Solomon immediately goes inside and sees Meredith in a cage, who warns him this is a trap. On the throne, Malachi insults Solomon before using magic to disappear. Solomon decides to free Meredith, who again says this is a trap and that they marked her to make him come back to this castle. Suddenly, the masked rider stabs Solomon in the shoulder and throws him on the ground before starting a fight. Solomon refuses to fight his own brother and tries using his words to make him see reason. But Marcus keeps on attacking, so Solomon has to defend himself. Both brothers are skilled swordsmen and don't manage to land a single hit on the other as they move all over the room. While they're distracted, Meredith escapes from the cage and hides. At that moment, Malachi returns and uncovers a huge mirror with a beastly demon inside. Getting more desperate now, Solomon continues to fight Marcus and finally manages to stab him. When Marcus grabs him by his neck, Solomon removes the mask to reveal the awful face, causing Marcus to drop him. Then Solomon throws a torch at Marcus to set him on fire and, with just a few more moves, finally kills him. At the same time, Malachi takes Meredith hostage and uses her blood on the mirror, causing it to release the demon. Solomon immediately starts running to dodge the beast's slow attacks, and he goes back to Malachi, telling him he can have his soul in exchange for Meredith. Malachi doesn't believe him and gets ready to kill Meredith, only for Solomon to shoot him in the head first. The sorcerer falls into the mirror and absorbs back the demon together with Solomon's soul, making him collapse. Meredith rushes to check on him, thinking he's dead, but suddenly Solomon wakes up. He remembers William's words and realizes he truly reached redemption by saving Meredith. The crew then shows up and explains all the cultists fell together, so the war is over. From then on, Solomon travels across the continents to fight monsters and protect the innocent. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like the video, and turn on post notification for more videos like this.